Good evening ladies and gentlemen, and here we are again. In today's episode I will be covering the process of animating the image we split into multiple layers in the previous episode. Generally when I animate a wallpaper, I will split it into three separate parts. The first part is the larger scale animations. These will almost always be the shake effects. The second part is the smaller scale animations. This is because the settings of these type of effects usually depend on the settings of the larger scale animations. And finally, the third part is the addition of particles or additional assets. Examples include background effects or fog, smoke or flying embers, the small scale effects. Before we begin, I want to make a disclaimer. I will be covering what I'm doing whilst there's footage of me doing so in the background. I have opted for this approach as attempting to explain every setting of every effect will take so much time that I'd still be talking by tomorrow. So take this video as an example on how to start with the effects that I cover and from there on I highly recommend trying out different things and tweaking them to your liking as it delivers the best results you have in mind and it's the best and most fun way to learn how to animate a wallpaper. So, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's start. The very first thing we want to do is increase the scale of our layers by roughly 20 to 30%. This is to prevent our layers from having to animate something that is not on screen. If you skip this, you might find yourself having a layer that duplicates itself. When you do see that, no worries, just simply increase the size and the problem will be solved. Next, we want to animate the larger scale effects. By these effects I'm mainly talking about the movement of the character that's central to the wallpaper. In this case we have it quite easy as there's only one. The first animation that we want to be doing is a breathing animation. You can do this by going to the main body layer and adding a shake effect. The first thing I tend to do is set the movement speed, as we will be copying the speed of other layers. We want the movement speed to remain the same. By adding a slider, we can link the movement speed of any effect to this one. By using this method, you will give the user of your wallpaper the possibility to adjust the movement speed whilst making sure all your effects are affected by the change they made. Next up, we want to go into the shape direction. Simply increase the size and drag upwards. You will notice only one single layer is moving. To fix this, go back to your layer and copy the effect. Then simply paste it into all other layers. Next, we don't want the main body to move as much as the rest of the body. So, we have to remove the current shake direction by pressing the red button next to the shake opacity. Then we redraw the shake direction, but we make it so the strength gradually goes up. It's helpful to know that the color of the shake direction is an indication of the direction of the animation and the strength of the color dictates how strong the animation is. Now that we have our breathing animation, it's time to go to the next one. Toggle off all your current animations, as creating a new one on top of your existing only makes it more difficult for you. To do this, press the eye on the right side of your effect. Do keep in mind, if you press the red cross, you delete the layer and wallpaper engine will not ask you first. So make sure you don't accidentally delete your layer and just toggle it off. Luckily, if you do accidentally delete it, Ctrl plus Z still works and brings it back. Next up, we'll want to animate the arms. We'll do the same thing as with the breathing animations, however, instead of using the regular brush in the shake direction, we're going to change it from direction to spin. 
Increase the size of the brush so that it roughly matches the size of your entire layer. Then find the center of the layer from which you want it to spin, which in our case will be the shoulder. Spin animations tend to be a bit weaker than forward animations. To compensate, increase the strength a little bit. Next up we'll be doing the other arm, where we'll be doing the exact same thing as previously mentioned. You'll notice that the arms are moving in the same direction at the same time, which just looks weird. To solve this, go to the time offset of your effects. The time offset dictates the delay in which the animations are played. The default is always 255. Set the opacity of one arm to 227 and set the other to half of that. This will cause the arms to move in opposite directions instead of the same. We will do the same process one last time for the head layer and we will have completed the first stage of animating it. And voila, we have completed the first stage of animating the larger scale animations. I will be running a short preview of what we have created so far in the background. From here on we will be working on the smaller scale effects. On to stage 2, where we will be making the smaller scale animations. First up, the hair animations. To do these, I will be using the water waves effect. This effect is able to create any type of wave you want and is perfect for our situation. The following notes may be important to know. The direction determines in which direction the waves go. I know, I'll take. Try to make the direction align in which way the hair's direction is going. The scale slider determines how large your waves are. You want these to be much smaller than the default. Generally, I tend to go between the 5 and 25 range. The best results in my opinion are the ones where the wave ends and the next one is just about to start. The speed simply determines how fast the waves go, the strength simply determines how wide your waves will be, and finally the perspective slider adds a perspective to your waves, but 9 out of 10 times you are better, better off leaving this at 0 or not using it at all.
next item on the list, the lighting. I will be using the shine effect to create an animated light effect. I tend to use shine on objects that produce or reflect light. Just as the water waves effect, shine is highly versatile and can be used for all your lighting animations. So, allow me to list the sliders that are important to know of. The copy background box. This is essential if you are working with multiple layers. If you do not check this box, your lighting effects will look horrible. The noise amount essentially dictates how much your lighting moves. My default go-to value is 0.6, but this is up to your own preference. The noise scale dictates how much noise happens at the same place. Just toy with this slider to see what it does, but I found it to be spot on with its default setting of 3. The noise speed determines how fast the movement from the noise goes. Setting this too high might result in your effect blinking like a madman. The ray threshold determines how bright the layer has to be for the shine effect to pick it up. Leave it too high and nothing will produce light, and leave it too low and everything will produce light. The ray intensity determines how bright the light is. The speed causes the rays of light around the shine effect to rotate, making them more lively. And finally, the blur scale simply makes the light rays more or less blurry. If you have to happen a lot of small light rays, it might help to put this on too. However, this differs per situation, so as ever, tweak it to your liking. We also have the God Ray effect for lighting. The God Ray effect works almost the same way the Shine effect does when it comes to its sliders, but with one key difference. You can set an origin point. The God Ray effect works a bit like the Sun does. The light originates from a point and shines in a 360 degree radius. Try to set this point around the same place that the natural light in the image comes from or the source of a magic spell for example. You can manually type in the values or use the target icon next to it. If you use the target icon, simply select it and then click on the location from where you want the light to originate. We'll also add in a little water waves on the background to make it look a bit more lively. Thank you. 
finally, we will be adding some additional assets to complement the rest of the wallpaper. You can add these by going to the left side of your editor and selecting the Add Asset. I will be using the Amber and the Fog asset for now. All assets share the same sliders on the right side of your editor. The important ones to note are the following. Opacity determines the opacity of your effect. Reduce this slider if you wish for your effects to be less bright and create a see-through effect. The playback rate determines the speed of the entire asset and the speed determines the speed of the particles that the asset creates. If you wish to change the entire animation speed I recommend using the playback rate over speed. The size determines the size of the particles that the asset creates. A quick example is how large the embers are that are created by the ember asset. The count determines how many particles the asset creates and the lifetime determines how long the particles are visible before they disappear. If you wish to learn more about how these sliders work, I highly recommend testing it out with the ember uh, particle asset as that one will be the most visible. There we go! We've successfully animated a wallpaper from scratch! Of course, not every wallpaper's animating process will be the same, but that's also what makes it fun. Discovering new things to try whilst animating a wallpaper is the best and most fun way to learn how to create them. And with enough practice, you'll be able to make them just the way you want. For more inspiration, I started making wallpapers around 4 years ago and almost all the things I have learned I have taught myself simply by continuously making wallpapers and trying out new effects. And I'm still learning new things with almost every wallpaper I make. So in short, I hope this video helped you understand a bit more about the nature of making wallpapers in Wallpaper Engine and where to start. And if you still have questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to explain them. Oh. And I get this question many times, no, you cannot export your wallpapers to a video file, yet. You will have to apply your wallpaper to your desktop and record your desktop. And with that, I wish you all a good time with Wallpaper Engine.